Hello and welcome to the first devlog on my new game, tentatively titled Let It Roll. My name is Justin and I've been a hobbyist game dev for the past couple of years. I made multiple different prototypes, completed a couple of small projects, and competed in a few game jams. So far all my games have been made using the Unity engine and I focused on 2D pixel art games. I think the past projects have given me a lot of experience and now I really want to branch out and tackle a project that's just a bit bigger. For as long as I can remember, I've loved playing card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Hearthstone just to name a few. The normal card games are great and I still really enjoy them, but once I got into deck builders, I found a whole new appreciation for card games. For those unfamiliar, deck builders are roguelike games where you start each run with a fresh deck and over time you'll add, remove, and upgrade those cards to create a new synergistic deck. Technically, the first one I ever played was Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories on the PS2, though that's a bit of an unorthodox one for the genre, and not exactly what I'm looking to make. I'm thinking something more in line with the adventure modes in Hearthstone, or more specifically, Slay the Spire. That's a game that I'm taking a ton of inspiration from for this project. I think the ability to develop and try out new, unique synergies on each run works to only elevate the strong points of the entire roguelike genre and Slay the Spire does this exceptionally well. The other main inspiration I have for this project is coming from none other than Yu-Gi-Oh. But not necessarily in the way that you may be thinking. I'm talking about Dungeons and Dice Monsters, the obscure game that only appeared in four episodes of the show and was only in two of the books. Despite that, it actually had a small physical release that I played with my brother going up. The game consists of choosing different dice from your dice pool to roll each turn in order to summon monsters. What always intrigued me was this dynamic of these risk and reward dice that synergize really well together. That mechanic was something I've thought about for a bit and it's something I'm really trying to work into this game. I started working on this project about six months ago and I've been going through some on and off development over that time period with it. So let me get you caught up on what's been done so far. The original concept was a roguelike game set in a casino where you'd work your way up the floors taking on waves of enemies, collecting items that help you in battle, and navigating other types of random encounters. The attacks you'd have would all be little minigames based on actual casino games. I initially made this prototype with the blackjack minigame, and I honestly really liked how the project was starting to come together. After thinking about it for a bit though, I realized that I was overscoping the project since having to create unique mechanics for each attack is a bit too large of a task on top of everything else that needs to get done. I also didn't think I'd be able to add in enough mini games in a fun and interesting way to keep the gameplay fresh. And that's when I landed on the dice mechanic and the project headed in the current direction it is right now. I think being able to be flexible with the mechanics of your game during development is an extremely important thing. Trying to continue something that just isn't working because it was your original idea isn't worth it, and you need to be able to adapt and change it over time. Here's how the current battle system works. On your turn, you'll be presented with seven dice from your overall dice pool, which you can choose to roll four of them and use however you want. There are three main types of dice. Attack dice, which are meant for dealing out damage to your opponents. Defense dice, which are used to give yourself armor for a turn, reducing the amount of damage you'll take from enemy attacks. And then special dice, which will have all kinds of different buffs for you, debuffs for enemies, and random other effects like healing. Thinking long term, I want to have different characters you can play as that would have their own type of unique dice to them that would replace the generic special dice. But that's getting a little ahead of myself. As you progress through your run, you'll be able to get new dice and upgrade the current ones you have. The dice sides are designed to be synergistic with one another so that you can create different builds for each run. Let's look at the armor dice for example. These defensive dice will have different pieces of armor on each side and you'll receive an increasing amount of armor for that turn depending on how many unique armor sides you rolled. So having multiple of these armor dice and rolling them at the same time will be a good way to gain a lot of armor in a turn. In the future, there may be other types of dice that act well when used in conjunction with these armor dice. Hopefully, these types of synergies will help players in making unique decisions and creating runs that feel different from one another in order to give them a good amount of replayability. One major mechanic that I still haven't fully made my mind up on yet 
is what to do about player health and currency. I originally had a pretty standard health system and you'd earn chips from battles that you could use to spend on items at different shops as you go up the casino floors. The other possibility that I was thinking of is instead of having separate systems, having both the chips and health systems directly linked. If you run out of chips, then it's game over. There's also the idea that you could cash out your chips at specific milestones on your run in order to unlock future items or dice. Thematically, this makes a ton of sense and it just seems to fit, but I'm not 100% sold on how the gameplay would feel with that in place. Drop a comment and let me know what you think about this idea, I'd love to hear some feedback on it. Other than that, the battle system is mostly in place at this point. It didn't always go smoothly and things had to be redone multiple times, but that's just how it goes sometimes with game development. You'll be beating your head against a wall on something that just won't work and when it finally does, it's a great feeling. Right now, the game's in a pretty basic state as most of my time has been working on getting the basic functions of the combat system worked out so that I can add in new dice and enemies quickly. Many of the UI and character design elements are both definitely not final and I'll be constantly reworking them in the future. One of the UI pieces that I did spend a good amount of time on though is how to display the sides of the dice and their descriptions when you hover over them. It was a bit of a challenge to figure out how to display all the data of the dice since you can only see one side at a time, but I'm happy with what I've come up with. When you mouse over any of the dice, it'll show you a preview of each side along with the amount of sides on the die and the description of what the side does. That description will then be updated with any additional synergistic effects or buffs increasing the amount of damage or defense you'll gain from using that die. I know that when creating games, it's most important to get the systems in place first, and I've worked a little too much on polishing it, but I find it really hard to motivate myself when I can't really see what the game I'm creating is going to look or feel like. Like I said though, there's still a ton of polish and fine tuning that needs to be done. My focus mainly so far has been getting the main gameplay loop up and running, so the next major task I'm going to have to work on is getting randomly generated maps working. When it comes to a story, I haven't fully fleshed one out yet, but I do have a rough idea of one in mind. Roguelike games aren't really known for their expansive storytelling, and most end up narrating the barebone story that they do have through very small, cryptic clues placed throughout your runs that you have to really piece together. This is really starting to differ though, as games like Hades have really started to change what it means for a roguelike to deliver a unique and engaging story. Now I don't think I'll be able to pull off something nearly as well as Hades did, but I think it's a great reference and roadmap for how this kind of thing can be done effectively, and how much it can improve your game and set it apart from the countless other roguelikes. That'll do it for this devlog though, so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to drop some comments with feedback for the project and the current direction I'm taking with it. I do want to make this project as fun and entertaining as possible, so getting that information from people with a bit less bias and distance from the project would be extremely useful. Well, I'll see you in the next devlog then. Thanks for watching.